Hey everybody, welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. By now you all should know that I have an affinity for anything that is old and derelict and doesn't run. Um, but what really got me into this whole mechanical wonderland that I have today is tractors. I've always loved tractors as long as I can remember. And a tractor that I've always wanted was a Farmall M. I've had a bunch of other Farmalls and I just for some reason never came across a Farmall, a, a Farmall M even though they are quite plentiful. So finally came across one. Not only did I finally get a good deal on an M, I got a good package deal on two tractors and this is either a Farmall 400 or 450. I don't honestly know the difference or if there is one or it's just a year model difference or what. But I bought both of these tractors as a package for $2,400. This one here has a brush cutter that's seen better days. It's all cracked up, rotted out, welded, and broken again. So the story that I got on these units is that they have not been run in five to seven years, but as they all were, they were running when parked. So in today's video, we're gonna tear into these things, see if we can't get them fired up and uh, run them around here a bit. I think the overall plan is here to get them both running and operating, and I'm gonna keep one of them, and I don't know which one it is yet. We'll get into some specifications and details here in a little bit but i like the styling and the looks of the m but this tractor is a little bit newer and has more power and some other features that the m does not so taking a closer look at the formal m here you can see that the front grille is in exceptionally good condition usually you see these things with all those little fins are bent and broken and smashed in everybody bumped into stuff with the front ends this one is in really good shape all the sheet metal, in fact, is in good shape, but you can see here it was sitting underneath a, a roof on a feed lot, an old, no longer used feed lot, and there was a bird's nest right above it, and man, the birds got about three inches of poo piled on there. This tractor has a remote kit here for the back, so you can run some lifting wheels on like a discs or a, a brush cutter or a, a hay rake, something like that, that you can do something low hydraulic pressure with. The tires have plenty of tread on them, but they are pretty well cracked up here, so they should hold together just fine for everything we're gonna do though. The guy I bought these from told me that one of these tractors has calcium in the tires. I think he told me it was this one, but just hitting on the tire, it doesn't, doesn't feel like it does. Usually you can kind of feel that calcium all jiggle in there when you hit it. Overall, the M is in great shape by the looks of it, and I believe him when he says it was running when parked. It seems like it should just fire right up. I haven't connected the battery yet or done anything, but I just tossed that battery on there and I figured, well, we should grab a camera first and try to document what it takes to get this thing going. I'm hoping it's not very much, but I want to get the M going and the 400 or 450, whatever that is, get it down off the trailer. It'd be easier to get it down under its own power. It saves me messing around with a skid loader or something, trying to hold that up while I pull it off and potentially damage something. If it was a wide front tractor, it wouldn't be a big deal to pull it off of there, but you have to do some creative steering with the tricycle front tractors to get it up the, the ramps like that. So I guess it only makes sense we should dig into this one first, try to get it going under its own power and get it down off that trailer. Too far! All right, so we got her unchained here, and I, you can call it a stupid move, but I did not inspect these things at all. I just looked at them sitting in the pen, and I said, oh, okay, for that kind of money. They look like they're in good enough shape. The guy seemed like an honest guy. I don't think he's going to lie to me. They're probably pretty much good to go with a little bit of TLC. We can probably get these things fired up. So, I didn't check any fluids, nothing. Um, I don't see any water in there. Looks like it probably has some moisture floating around in there. I don't think it's completely empty, but sure not full up to where it should be. Let's check the old dipstick. Uh-huh. Yeah, there we go. Looks like it's pretty much right on the money for full. Doesn't smell bad. Definitely oil kind of gets a smell when it's been sitting for a long time, and this oil definitely has that smell. Next thing we need to check is the fuel situation. It's bleak. That fuel in there, in the sediment bowl here, looks pretty gross. Sounds like we got a little bit in the tank. 
Anything come out of the pet cock? No, nothing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's not horrible, but it's not good. There's a lot of loose, flaky rust in the bottom of the tank. That means we're going to be clogging up that tube that runs to the carburetor. And that means if we don't clean that out before we put some gas in there, it's probably going to keep clogging up our uh, outlet tube there. Maybe we can get the shop vac down in there, try to suck some of that out. Just judging by how nasty the gas looks, what's left in the sediment bowl there, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the carburetor's probably gunged up too, but the valve is off, so maybe the guy that I bought this from was nice enough to run it out of fuel the last time he ran it. I'm also noticing the wires over here. There's several that are just kind of hanging out here in the open. Not sure what all they do. We're gonna need a hot wire though to make something happen here on the starter solenoid. I can jump it easy enough. This tractor has what is referred to as a TA or a torque amplifier, as you can see indicated by the chrome tag there. I'm a big fan of international stuff and farm all especially, but uh, the TAs are pretty well known for like always going out. I think that's probably more to lack of maintenance than anything else, but they're, they're great when they're working, but it seems like they're rarely working. What the TA does is kind of like split your gear so that you can get more power out of a gear without actually shifting gears. Anyways, let's try to get a shop vac out here and maybe a battery and see what we can do with this thing. Well, I hope this works and kind of get down in there. I think what I might do, because I can't really wave this thing around down in there and get to all the places that I need to, I might kick the vacuum on and then introduce some compressed air in there to kind of blow everything around and hopefully the vacuum just sucks it all up. Well, it's not great, but it's better than it was. I think it's good enough we can stick some gas in it and not clog up our sediment bowl every two seconds. While we're on the subject of sediment bowls, we have to get some pliers, break that nut loose. There we go. Mmm. Oh yeah, that smells like Minwax. Yummy. If that's what the sediment bowl looks like, it's a good indication that the carburetor isn't probably very far off from that. For the sake of trying to get this thing off the trailer sooner than later, we're just going to give her a go after I clean the sediment bowl. Buddy Austin there doesn't think the gas smells very good. I love the smell of varnished gas. I'm kind of weird. I don't know. Like if you could make a varnished gasoline air freshener and put it in the car, I'd be all about that. That and cow pies are two weird smells that I love that a lot of people can't stand. Not dairy cow poo. But cow pies out in the field, oh yeah. It smells like fresh cut hay. You tell me what smells better than fresh cut hay. So while we're draining things out, I was trying to get this drain plug out of the bottom of the carburetor here and all I'm doing is mangling it up, rounding it off. She needs a little bit of heat. And it might not seem real smart to heat the bottom of a carburetor. And that's because it's probably not. But I'm kind of out of options. If there's any gas left in this carburetor, it is probably so nasty that I don't think it's going to light anyways, so we got that on our side. <laughs> I think we got her. Yeah! She's moving now. That's way more gooder. Behind door number one. Oh uh, yeah, there's some, some nastiness. Oh yeah, it's varnished up. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're just gonna pretend we didn't see that. Put some fresh gas in that tank and let it kind of flow the fresh gas in there, try to sweep out any sludge that's in there. I mean, we're probably gonna have to clean out the carburetor really good anyhow, but I'm trying to take some shortcuts here because we're losing daylight and I wanna get this thing off my trailer. So if we can get it to run even just decent enough to get it off the trailer and into the shop, we would be pretty, pretty far ahead. Pour a little out for Toby Keith. <sighs> Put a little gasoline in this thing. I'm not going to go crazy, just put a little bit in there, enough to find out if the petcock's going to be leaking like crazy. Petcock seems to be holding. Crack this open, see if we get anything out of it. Oh yeah. Let that run clear. That doesn't look bad. To be fair, I don't think it is, but I don't even know if the engine's free at this point. I'm sure it is. And the belt's just slipping there. Hard to say. 
All right. Let's see what we get here. Ooh, still not the clearest looking gasoline, but I wouldn't expect it to be. It's got a lot of fine particles in it. Yeah. Probably pretty much going to treat this gasoline like a rinse for that fuel tank. I think that's like a 20 gallon tank, because I imagine they designed it so you could plow all day on one tank of gas, or at least in theory, that's what you could do. So once our sight glass fills up there, it should go down through our fuel line and then out this plug at the bottom. And we're going to wait till it comes out a little clear. Looks like we should be up into the fuel line now. So we should, theoretically, expect that gas to start coming out of here any second. Any second. I said any second. So if a float is stuck in the up position, it won't let gas to come down into the bowl here. So we'll give her a few wraps. Yep, see? A couple taps knock the float loose probably. Start getting a little bit of fuel dribbling out of there. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. That's coming out clear enough, I guess. I got us a new plug to put in there so that we're not trying to fight that rounded one. Fuel to our carburetor. We have nasty fuel to our carburetor, I should say. Let's try to put some uh, angry pixies at this thing and see if we can't get that engine to turn over. To be fair, at this point, I still don't even know if the thing is free. Could be locked up. I don't think it is, but it's not out of the question. All right. So our battery box is underneath the seat here. And we have no battery. Let's see if I got one that'll fit in here. I think that little one I have will. These connections are far from ideal, but they might work. We'll just switch that to the on position and see what's going on up there. So there's not a lot going on on the electrical side of these old tractors, but really all we need to get this thing cranked up, 12 volts coming into our starter. We need to be able to jump 12 volts across to here to get it to try to engage the starter. And then we need 12 volts going into the coil on the other side of the engine so that we have some spark. So just real quick to see if we have even voltage coming in here, I can jump from this terminal down to here. Oh yeah, yeah, we're getting voltage in, but I don't think our connections are ideal. Or the starter could be engaged and won't turn the engine. Hard to say at this point. All right, so we're gonna rule out all of our connections and the battery up there and just see what we got with the jump pack directly. Contact, that's not great. That should be cranking right now. Rot row. Why you no work? Oh, there we go. My ground is no good. I mean, it could be because my, my connectors have melted, but you know, it's not jumped to any conclusions. I would think that it should have been cranking like that. That was definitely getting enough power to crank that. So do we have a bad starter? Is the engine actually stuck? I don't know. It would seem at this point, the most sense would make to just pull the starter. Once I have the starter off, I can test the starter on the bench. Not to mention, should be able to confirm the engine's free by barring over the flywheel. All right, well, it's actually the next day. It was getting dark and I had to run. So I just went ahead and pulled the whole kit and caboodle in the shop here. It seemed easier to pull the trailer in the shop than it was to put all my tools away just to dig them back out first thing this morning. I do need my trailer for something else first thing this morning, so we still gotta get this thing off of here, and I still think the easiest way to do it would be to just get it running. I think we're close now. So of course, I didn't turn the camera on to do it. Apologize for that, but as you can see, that's the flywheel in there. That's what the starter engages on to spin your engine over. Now, I pulled the starter off yesterday, as you guys saw, and just couldn't help myself. I hurried up and threw a bar on it and gave her a little tug, and it was indeed stuck. The engine would not turn, but after a couple good yanks on the bar, it did pop loose. Uh, it was not super stuck, but it did take a, a good yank on the bar a couple times to uh, get the engine to turn over. So, I think that's probably the extent of our issues. I did not get a chance to throw the jump pack on that starter all by its lonesome there on the deck and see if it was going to turn. I kind of thinking it will. I'm kind of thinking that the starter just didn't have the gusto to spin the engine over from its little stuck position. So the engine was stuck and there could be a few different reasons for that. One is it's not impossible for the engine to just naturally get stuck from sitting a long, long time. I don't think this thing was sitting a super, super long time, like long enough to where the engine would just lock up from moisture in the air. Two, 
You could have moisture getting in from an outside source, say around your exhaust or something. Looking at the muffler here with the rain cap on it and everything and the rest of the manifold, not to mention the fact that it was parked under roof, I don't think that was probably the, the case. I don't think it was getting any kind of rain water down inside the engine. The third possible option and probably the most likely is that the head gasket is at some stage of failing and allowed some of the coolant from the head section of the engine to get down into one of the cylinders there. And just a couple drops of coolant will uh, sit there on that cylinder for quite a while. And that can be enough to stick your engine. So I don't know, we're gonna have to get this thing running, put it through its paces, check it, make sure we don't have any kind of head gasket leak. Theoretically, the starter should spin here. Contact. Oh yeah, she spins. Yep, it works. You gotta pay attention on these old starters. A lot of times they'll have an oil cup back here. So that lubricates this back bushing in the starter. Once we get this thing reinstalled, I'm gonna go ahead and put a few drops of oil down in there. Try to make the starter sound happy and last longer. All right, starter coming in. Uh -huh. All right, with our starter reinstalled, I have renewed hope that we can get this engine to crank over. <clears throat> You guys ready? Contact. Perhaps I spoke too soon. All right, I've added the jump pack onto our starter here because I'm concerned that we still have really bad connections and that could be hampering the starter's ability to crank this thing. There we go. Cranking the engine over now. This starter's pretty noisy, but the engine is spinning. Contact. Yeah, that, that starter definitely doesn't sound happy. Should be good enough to get her going, I think. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is verify that we have power going to our coil to run the ignition system. Looking at the wiring over on the other side the way that it is, looking at the wiring on the other side of the tractor, I'm kind of skeptical that we would have power coming in, but it's not impossible. There is a wire running down here. Look at that, we do have power into the coil. I'd have lost that bet. That's good, that's one less thing we have to mess with. I'm betting that we're gonna have to pull off this distributor cap though, and at the very least, give those points a good cleaning to get some spark. In fact, I'm so confident in that that I'm not even gonna try to get this thing going without doing that first. Just a couple clips, and our cap should come off. Have to remove our rotor. Rotor looks pretty Pretty fouled up as well, we'll have to clean that up. Actually, it's got a hole burnt through the contactor there, so that could be a hindrance. Same with these contacts inside the cap. Very gummy and oxidized and nasty looking in here. We're definitely have to go clean all those contacts up. There's a dust cover. Now we should be able to access our points. So there we go. There's our breaker points right there. So we put our nail file in here. Just give those a rub back and forth for a few times. Clean those contact points. Contact. Right now I'm just using my knife to scrape all the places where the spark is supposed to jump a gap here. It's super high voltage, spark is, so it can jump a pretty good gap and bridge through a lot of junk, but we still want to give it the best, best shot possible. All right, I think we should probably have those pretty well cleaned up. Let's go ahead and slap it back together now that everything's cleaned up and hope for the best. Okay, in theory, we are pretty much ready to give this thing a try. Not feeling 100% confident, but I'll give us like a 70% chance of success here. Verify that the tractor is out of gear so it doesn't run me over. These big wheels, they'll do it. All right, the gas is on. The choke is on. We are ready to try her out here. Fingers crossed. Contact. So we did not have spark, so I went through and I cleaned the points a little bit more aggressively and I'm 99% sure we have spark now. Let's go ahead and give this another go. The choke is on, no ether. Can I get a contact? Still nothing. We're gonna give her a little snort and see what that does for us.
We got nothing, and I mean nothing. Not a spit, sputter, pop, nothing. <sighs> I'm gonna give her one more attempt before I dive into something deeper here. There we go, we had one good pop that time. <laughs> <laughs> yes! She is gonna go now. Try her again here. <laughs> all right, all right. It actually sounds pretty decent problem we're having now is that it's only running off of ether. So as I said yesterday, I was kind of in a hurry wanting to get this thing off the trailer so I didn't want to pull the carburetor all apart. I was trying to get it running as is. I'm still in a hurry today, but I just don't see us getting this thing actually going without pulling that carb. So at the very least, I'm going to pull the bowl off, which is just four bolts and a cable. I should be able to get the bottom half of this carburetor off and I should be able to have access to everything I need to get fuel going to the engine. Dropping the last bolt here, then we should be able to separate the halves of the carburetor. My suspicion is that the main jet is probably clogged. I'm gonna try to gently persuade this to come off without breaking the gasket. All right, looks like our gasket's good. <laughs> what a mess in here, boys. The float doesn't look like it was seated in there, right? We'll have a look at that in a second. Let me go dump this gas out of here. It really, the gas itself doesn't look as bad as I kind of suspected. The first thing I noticed here, the float is supposed to be engaged in the back side of this hinge. It's supposed to be held on by two sides there and we are currently only held on by one side so the float really can't go up and down the way it's supposed to. In fact, our fuel needle just fell out. Now it was only able to fall out because the bowl isn't holding the float up there but it shouldn't have been able to even do that. I don't see any way that I did that. I think the float just kind of worked its way out of there. If you look at the way the pin is retained on this side, it has kind of like a friction fit going on. So you can see there's like rust on that whole thing. It hasn't been disturbed. That's, that's where it was. So the float was probably not able to function correctly. In addition to the float not functioning properly, it looks like we have a couple orifice tubes there that are broken or damaged or something or other. These two right here. Not sure exactly what those are supposed to look like, but I'm pretty sure it's not like that. And as to be expected, the fuel bowl is pretty gross. We need to scrub that out really good. We'll pull the main jet out, blow it out with compressed air, make sure all the orifices are clean. I'm going to assume it probably ran with those damaged orifice tubes, but probably not as well as it should have. All we can do right now is hope. So we'll clean this thing up as best we can, slap it back together and cross our fingers. I've just removed the float entirely to clean it up and let you guys see how nasty it is. Look at that. There's all kind of grossness built up on here, so we're going to scrub that up good. The good thing is that there is no fuel in the pontoons, so we'll give her a good shake and it is empty, so we can reuse the float. Okay, we got the bottom half of the carburetor as clean as we're going to get for now. You basically have to do some sort of an electrolysis or a, an evapo rust soak to get this thing any cleaner. But all the flaky stuff has been attended to, so we shouldn't have much more issue. All the orifices are clean and open now. This one that's sticking up there in the center, I was able to get it out with a pair of pliers. Um, and I determined that all that was really broken off of it was the wing that makes it removable with a screwdriver. I got the orifice on it cleaned out, and man, it's not much bigger than a human hair. It's a very, very tiny orifice. Got that clean, the one next to it's clear. This emulsion tube has those six holes in it and a few of those were plugged up as well. So with that cleared out, it should flow fuel much better. The only real thing of great concern that I noticed was our main jet here. I don't know what the heck's going on here, but it looks like somebody's like took a grinder to it and kind of changed the profile of it almost. It's very non-concentric and it's not even centered in the shaft anymore. I don't know what the heck's going on there, but all I can do right now is put it back together, hope for the best, and we're probably gonna have to get a new one of these because I don't think this machine's gonna run right without a good one of these. All right, we got our carburetor all back together there. I, uh, I know I didn't show this in very good detail and that's because, well, I am still in a bit of a time crunch. 
And I'm also pretty sure we're gonna have to do this on that M out there as well. Go ahead and turn our fuel valve back on here. And I'm feeling pretty good that this time we're gonna be able to get this thing running. All right, what do you guys think? You feeling good? Cause I'm feeling good. Let's, let's give this thing a go here. No starting fluid either right off the bat here. I'm gonna give her a try with just fuel only. Contact. Seemed like it was gonna go and now it's not. Sometimes things take a little bit of persuasion. Give her a shot of ether here. This sucker just does not wanna go. Sorta of ran there for a second. Something is really not happy here. It's, it's not pulling fuel up to the carburetors, what I suspect is happening. The fuel is on. We should be getting plenty of fuel. Only thing I know to try at this point is open up our main jet a little bit, try to give it a little bit more fuel. We're gonna have to get back into the fuel system here and figure out why we're not getting fuel into the engine like we're supposed to. All right, like I said, I'm crunched for time, so I didn't show it, but the guy that I bought these tractors from gave me a carb rebuild kit, and he said it was for the M, but actually I, I've looked at it. They're pretty much the exact same carb kit, so I was able to reutilize the gasket and a few other little parts in there, and hopefully I've got the carburetor to where we can actually get some fuel up to the engine now. I do not understand why we're not pulling fuel. Well, I just went ahead and pulled the plugs out and after all that cranking you can see these plugs are bone dry we are not drawing any fuel up out of that carburetor and I for the life of me cannot understand why it's completely clean now fresh gaskets on it it's got quite a bit of manifold vacuum it's got a good fuel supply going to it and it just will not draw any fuel Finally, after giving this thing full on sucking my palm into the carburetor level of chokage, we're drawing fuel. Problem is, it's still not happy. carburetor has been cleaned twice now. I had it apart. I blew out every single orifice. I've cleaned every tube and jet that I can get to. I can't think of any reason in the world why it's struggling to pull fuel so much. Clearly it is though.
This is going to sound very crude, and that's because it is. What I think I'm going to do, because I am still under a time crunch, I have to have this thing off my trailer here. i got to go pick up some other piece of equipment. I know I could fork this thing off somehow, but I'm too worried about damaging it in the process. It's a, it's a very weird thing to pick up, and the brush hog complicates things as well. What I think I'm going to do is put a piece of tape across this intake and just poke a couple holes in it and try to start it and see if it's going to run like that for us. And I'm going to keep poking holes until we hit the right level of air getting in there and uh, hopefully this thing runs right. We're going to have to get a proper carb kit, redo that main jet and I don't know, something is obviously blocking uh, a venturi or something that's not letting it draw fuel in correctly. All right, so you can see what I did there. I just hose clamped this spray paint cap over the end and I'm going to put one hole in it for now and see where that gets us and I'll just keep adding holes and however many holes it takes to get this thing to run right long enough to get it off the trailer because it seems like if I hold my hand right there it'll run for you know an undetermined amount of time but as soon as you take your hand away it dies. myself. If it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. It's probably been running like that for a half hour now. And it stumbles a little bit here and there, but outside of that, running pretty decent. Hopefully I can get this thing down off there now. Time to die. Dang it. Oh, oh. Still made it. It is none too happy about any of this. Ugh. 
At least it's off the trailer. Let's get this thing out of the way, and then uh, I gotta go haul something, but we'll dig into the carburetor when I get back. Well, it's a few days later and I actually have the shop space and the time now to push these things in here and give them the love that they deserve. I really, oh yeah, I just, I, I love the Farm All M. When you think about farming, this is the tractor that comes to mind for me and I know a lot of other people. This is the tractor I really want to work on right now, especially since I'm already so frustrated with the 400. But we need to get the 400 out first. I strategically put the M in first so that I had to get the 400 out of the way to get the M out. So that's, that's the way I have to keep myself tasked otherwise. Priorities, you know. So anyways, as you guys saw a moment ago, my spray paint air fuel mixture cap here, it did its job. Got this thing running long enough to get it off the trailer, but it's not really cutting the mustard. So at this point, I need to pull that entire carburetor off of there. As you guys saw before, I was just pulling the bowl off every time I had it off. So we need to take this whole upper section off because the problem has to be up there. I took the air compressor and I blew all that stuff out while I had the bowl off and it seemed to be all clean and clear, but obviously something ain't right. All right, we got the carburetor set here on the bench, a nice clean pig mat so we can see what the heck we're doing. Well, that's interesting. The needle and seat here, what regulates how much fuel can come into the carburetor. The threads are all rolled over on that, the seat where it threads down into the carburetor there, and the threads are all rolled over. It's almost like that was the wrong thread pitch or something for this carburetor. The threads in the carb itself appear to be okay. Probably best to clean those up with a tap before we try to put a seat back in it. There is a new needle in seat in that carburetor kit the guy that I got the tractors from gave us. Not much else to this carburetor. The only thing there is to take apart now is there's a screw right here. I'm not sure what exactly is going on in there. I think that's just a plug screw. I think that's just a plug screw, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure what the heck is going on in there. Well, once again, we're into this carburetor and I see no issues whatsoever. Every port and passage appears to be free and clear. I cannot understand why we're having this issue. All right, we got the carburetor back on. I really hope this thing lights this time because I am sick and tired of fighting it. Fuel's on, choke's on. Tractor's in neutral so it doesn't start up, run over me and drive through the garage door. Say a little prayer to the tractor gods. Because I am sick of fighting this thing. Come on, baby, come on. Give me a contact. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the prayer to the tractor gods must be what did it. Turned her over the edge. Something's uh, not quite right here because this thing went full bore wide open uncontrolled and I mean wide open what did we screw up it sounded good though for a couple seconds didn't it about scared the crap out of me I'm just sitting here wondering what the heck did we do different in the carburetor this time I can't tell you but I hope it works and I hope we have a little bit of throttle control let's try this again here no Something's not right with that throttle shaft. The way the throttle works on this carburetor is there's a shaft that runs out of this governor assembly and then it's just got like a keyway kind of thing sticking out of it. On the carburetor side, there's just a little slot that that keyway has to engage in and it's kind of a pain. You can't really see what you're doing when you're trying to line it up. I thought I had it engaged, but obviously not. So just gotta pop that back off there and get it engaged. On the upside though, guys, it's getting fuel, it's firing up and it's running on its own. So that's, that's a major success. All right, so I'm hoping this is a quick, easy fix here. So what you can see right here is this little tit sticks out on this throttle shaft. 
and that tip needs to engage into the slot on the butterfly shaft here in the carburetor. So uh, apparently I just didn't have that engaged properly and that was letting the throttle just automatically suck wide open because if you don't have anything holding on to your butterfly, as soon as you get a vacuum going in there, it'll just pull that throttle plate wide open and you'll have absolutely zero throttle, throttle control, which is, I believe is what happened there. There we go. Oh, let's run that throttle back and forth for me now. Make sure we got throttle plate movement. Oh yeah. All right, it's all back together. Let's go ahead and give this one more try and I really hope we got this thing this time. Contact. Helps if you turn the fuel on. Oh yeah, listen to this kitten purr. Finally! What a sweetheart! So nice and quiet. Engine sounds super smooth. A thing of beauty right there. Look how low we can get this thing to idle. I can't believe how low that thing idles. Must have good compression. Even at that really low idle, we still have good oil pressure. Over 70 PSI at a, at a fast idle. That is a beautiful, beautiful sound. <laughs> oh boy that was a hard-fought battle but thank goodness we finally got it seems to run absolutely fantastic we know it drives because I was able to drive it off the trailer there so this one is looking like it's pretty close to done last thing I want to do before I put all the tin work and everything back on is I want to clean out our oil bath air filter down here we'll put some fresh oil on that clean out that reservoir and this is a power steering reservoir up here I'm gonna open that up and see if we need to top any fluid off in that thing. I didn't show it earlier, but I did top off the radiator too. It wasn't very low at all. It was just barely out of sight right below the tube. So a little splash of antifreeze and she came right back, right back around. And that thing runs good. I'm excited. All right, well, I popped that power steering reservoir off and lo and behold, we are extremely low. I think most of that was due to leakage around these hose connections here, but I was able to tighten those up quite a bit, so I'm hoping that that cuts down on our leakage, especially because it drips right down here on the exhaust manifold and cooks all that off, so it's kind of not the best situation. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do a complete service on this thing or what just yet, um, but for right now I just want to get it completely functioning and out of the shop. So we're going to top that off with some new power steering fluid, and also I popped off this oil bath air cleaner. And it doesn't look hateful. There's a bunch of dandelion seeds floating around in there, but 
it doesn't look terrible. We'll dump that out, clean it out, put some fresh oil in there, stab it back together, and then I have the tube that connects the carburetor up to the air filter. We have to reinstall that. Slap all of our tin work back on the side, and then finally we can move on to the Farmall M, which I am more excited about. All right, well that oil looks a lot better. There was a good bit of sludgy nastiness down at the bottom there, but that's to be expected. All right, I did some playing around here and I think I got all the wiring fixed up. Just had to reconnect a couple broken wires and this thing should start from the key now, though I have not tried it. Contact. <laughs> yes. Oh, the power steering works very nicely now. You can do some tractor square dancing with this unit. And that's it, because I think I forgot to turn the fuel on, but that's good enough. I gotta resist the urge to go drive this thing around now, because we gotta fix that M first. All right, moving on to the M, which I believe they named the Model M, because they were calling it the Farm, Farming Master, I believe is where that M designation came from. And I once heard an old timer tell me that you just couldn't farm without a Farm OM. Even John Deere people and Case people, it seemed like they all had an M sitting somewhere on the farm. I believe that both of these tractors were the biggest in their lineup in the day. I know the M was for sure, with the biggest in International's lineup at the time. She's out of gear. I got some semblance of battery connection here. Let's see if anything's going to happen. Sparks. Sparks happened. That doesn't seem good. Oh, our connections are just terrible. So. They got this start switch rigged up here, which is supposed to be pushed with your foot and where that's mounted, you'd never get your foot up there, I don't think. I think it's originally supposed to be down here. So I think originally you would have pushed on this little lever to start the tractor, but they added this hydraulic remote kit for lifting some wheels on a disc or a rake or something like that. And those lines are in the way, you can't get your foot in there. The good solution to that would be to make some longer lines and route them better. I don't really care for where that's all mounted at. So ideally down the road a piece, if we decided that we wanted to restore this tractor, I probably would relocate that start button back in the original location there. Should work fine for the meantime though. The only issue with it at the moment is a really bad crimp connection up here. See, it just loose as a goose inside of that terminal. Other than missing the bolt that tightens the clamp here, it looks like the rest of the hot lead is good. So I'll just cut that end off, crimp a new terminal on there. The ground connection doesn't look super promising yet either. All right, we redid some connections here. Feel a lot better about that. I threw a bolt on the positive side, got that clamped on nice and tight. Threw a new crimp end on the cable, plus a new terminal for the negative. These ends of the cables look fine. Go ahead and give her a go, see what happens now. Contact. Oh yeah, she turns nice. The starter sounds a lot happier on this model as well. Oh yeah, I don't think this one's gonna take much. I'm excited. Probably the only two things we really need to check for is fuel and spark. I'm sure that carburetor's pretty nasty and I'm sure we're probably not getting spark. So we'll check and make sure we have power getting into our coil and if we do, uh, we'll put a plug on, we'll test it, see if we're getting sparked. I doubt we are, at which point we'll have to pull off the distributor cover, shave those points up just like we did on the other tractor. And boy, the sight glass on this one is not looking good. Look at just that pile of schmoo in there. The guy told me that this stick here was for checking the fuel level, so we'll do that right now. I think there's gas in this one. I could hear it sloshing around at one point. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've got all the old gas. Ooh, yep, <coughs> that's varnished. Usually I like that smell, but I don't know what's going on with this fuel. I'm not a big fan of that. That does not smell good. 
We'll get started draining that into a bucket, I think. All right, so I pulled our fuel line off the carburetor down here, which was fun because the nut is rounded off. See if anything even comes out. We might, might have a clog in the tank. I'll have to blow some air back into that. Yeah, that seems to be the case. Dang it. Oh yeah. We got fuel flowing now. There she comes. Hey, we actually hit the bucket too. Look at that. It's gonna smell like bad, bad gas in here for a little while. Okay, take two on this mission. Yeah, it looks like this pan is gonna be big enough we can actually catch it. Probably get a form of funnel going on that. Direct it in there a little bit better. Oh yeah, this is gonna be the ticket right here. Oh, get it in the pan, you moron. Anyways, we're gonna let that disgusting waterfall keep on the flow in there till the tank is empty. We'll have to clean out our sediment bowl. In the meantime, I guess I can check for spark. Give this radiator a check here, see if we got any coolant going on. Oh yeah, yep. Coolant looks good, nice and clear over the tubes. We're ready to run in that department. <laughs> that is just a mountain of bird poo. Should have kicked that off outside before I brought it in here. But there's time for a bath after we get it running. In the fuel tank, it looks pretty rusty in there, but it's not like flaky rust. It doesn't have like a pile of debris like the other tractor did. So it uh, looks like it's probably just got moisture in the fuel over the years and rusted that inside of the tank. The oil smells okay. It's pretty dark. Going to need a service once we get it running, but it'll pass the inspection for now. So the first stop on checking for spark is see if we got power on this side of the coil. And then if we do, we'll check it over here. Okay, well, first step in establishing spark, make sure our kill switch is pulled out. And that should let the, uh, the pixies flow over here to our... So we can just check right here with the test light. All right, so I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to clean the points, but we can try it without cleaning the points first. Go ahead and hit it, Austin. Hit it. Hold it down. Nothing. There's our points. We'll hit that with the file real quick. Oh yeah. We got spark now. Oh yeah. All right, let's see what's behind door number one in our carburetor here. Bone dry, but looks pretty darn clean in there. I'll tell you what. I think if we'd have got gas into this thing, it probably would have fired up. Feels like our float has water or uh, fuel in it. Oh yeah. Can you guys hear that? This side has got a hole in it and it is full of fuel. That's no good. The only good thing about this is that these parts are very readily available and I should be able to just run down to tractor supply and pick up another one of these things. Well, apparently I was lying because I just got back from tractor supply and they did not have this carburetor float in stock. They used to have these things in stock. I do remember they used to have a whole shelf full of different floats, but anyway, that's not today. Also called down to Napa, they didn't have it. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and try to repair this thing. Okay, well, I played around and played around and played around with the soldering iron, with the blowtorch, with the, the solder in general, and could not get anything to stick to this brass for whatever reason. It just beads up and rolls off no matter how hot I get this piece, and I'm afraid of getting it too hot and damaging it. <clears throat> so what I ended up doing there is using an epoxy sealer that is rated for gasoline on there, and hopefully that seals up the area because it was like, there's a little dent right here, I don't know if you guys can tell. But in that crease is where the two pinholes were that were leaking. So I got those sealed up and hopefully this thing floats now. All right, got our carburetor all cleaned out, at least as best we can for right now. The float, hopefully that patch holds up on it. If not, I ordered one online, so we should have one in a couple days. 
Oh, by the way, I ran the serial number. It's a 1949 model. Okay, we got some fresh gas in the tank. The carbs all put back together. Let's uh, give this thing a go. All right, let's give her a go here. Contact. tuning on the carburetor I'd say she's a little stumbly definitely not running as nice as the 400 but uh, we got a running farm all in all right so I've been playing around with the carburetor a little bit trying to get it dialed in a little bit better and smooth it out and we still keep getting that pop to the flapper if you listen can you guys see how it has that irregular jump and pop to it that shouldn't be right, and that indicates to me that we're maybe having a little bit of a miss. So I came around here and have a gander at the plug wire. Oh, I reckon that could be your problem, huh? All right, so to fix that, well, what really needs to happen is a whole new set of plug wires. I'll try to rearrange this thing a little bit and then give her another go and see what happens. I don't know that that's gonna work or not. That wire's pretty hardened in place. Like I said, really, it needs a new set of plug wires, but I'm not trying to dive into all that in this video. Let's give her another go. I call that a win, guys. This thing's running great now. I was just getting ready to reconnect that uh, intake pipe from the carburetor to the air cleaner, but I figured I'd go ahead and pull the oil bath off of this thing first. It doesn't look too bad. Actually, the other one looked worse. Uh, the real story is at the bottom of this pan, but we're going to go ahead and change it anyway. Uh, probably okay, though. Our oil bath was not too dirty at all. There was just a bunch of stink bugs down in that center section there, but that's where they would fall if they went up through the intake there, or down through the intake, I should say. So I wiped it out good, threw some fresh oil in there, and we're going to be good to go in that department. All right, guys. Well, we have two running, functioning farm all sitting in the shop here, and that makes me a happy guy. But sitting in the shop here doesn't do them any good. I think we are at a point where we are ready for a road test. just so incredible to me 
how well this thing sits here and idles nice and slow, quiet, sounds just as smooth as a sewing machine. Yes. Well, there we have it. Two running and functioning farm all tractors for the low, low price of $2,400. Did we get burned or was this a great deal? I'm gonna call it a great deal. I, I really can't complain about this at all. Both tractors are in pretty darn good shape. Uh, definitely not perfect, definitely not uh, parade ready, but the 400 runs amazing. I can't believe how well that tractor runs. Even better when you have gas in it. And the M here, it's not bad, but it does need a little bit more tinkering. Uh, we could probably put a good carb overhaul kit into there and this thing would probably run quite a bit better. Plugs and wires, a few little things and I bet you they'd both be just cherry as far as operation goes. But we're left with a tough decision here. Do we keep one of them? Do we keep both of them? Or do we sell both of them? I sure don't need either one of them, but I have always dreamed of having a Farmall M. But the more I've played on both of these tractors now, I find myself liking the 400 more. The 400 is definitely the better tractor as far as specs and options go. But I'm having a hard time making up my mind. So I want you guys to let me know down in the comments which one you guys think I should hold on to or get rid of both of them or whatever. If I do keep one, I don't plan on restoring it right away or anything, maybe someday down the road, distant project. Uh, there's, as you guys know, about 300 things in line in front of it. So. As long as it runs, functions, and can be handy around here doing little odds and ends, pulling a wagon, whatever, um, something like this is good to have around on a piece of, piece of acreage like this.
But anyways, I guess that's all I've got for today. So if you guys like this video, if you like farm malls, you like tractor stuff in general, drop a comment down below, let me know. Hit that thumbs up button, really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys a dime. If you'd like to help support the channel in a little more direct way, you can head on over to dieselcreek.com. Link, as always, is down in the description. We just got some new hoodies in stock over there at the store. They're new, heavier weight, better quality hoodies. Um, nobody had even complained about the other hoodies, but I didn't personally like them, so I didn't figure I should be selling them if I didn't like them. So we got some ones that I like a lot better, and uh, you can get those now over at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. But that's all I got for today. So until the next time, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.